Our application provides its users with an easy way to configure a traffic intersection from scratch. This video covers some steps of the configuration process, specifically the work that needs to be done in the planning editors. I will show you three of them for the standard configuration process. There is an example configuration where signal groups of cars, bicycles and pedestrian crossings are already prepared. Content of this video Arranging the signal groups so that there are no conflicts Assigning a dedicated green interval to all signal groups Creating a pattern of signal switching times to enable traffic flow We start our demo in the signal group references editor where we just create a conflict matrix Within this matrix it is necessary to go through all conflicting signal groups the topology of a given intersection determines a conflict between two signal groups. Once the relevant conflicts are identified, it is possible to go through the intergreen time matrix. The precondition for the intergreen time matrix is a reference to a conflict matrix. After that, one can see a visualization of the conflicts in the intergreen time matrix. Then the time period must be filled in. This period must be chosen so that each signal group which is entering the intersection has enough distance to the one which is clearing the intersection. For a start, I can enter a value of 5, that means 5 seconds, for all these intergreen time values. There is an intergreen time calculation and output from another editor which can be used to derive values from the distance between objects position among the intersection area. Once the intergreen time calculation is selected in the properties, one can gather kind of recommended values out of it. These values are considered in two categories, effective and theoretical. So the initial values I typed in can be compared to either theoretical or effective values. Eventually, one of these recommended value sets can be applied to our matrix. The recommended value for each field is immediately visible. For applying these recommended values into the current matrix, one needs to select the preferred option in the Fill Matrix menu. The next step is to use the Stage and Stage Sequences editor. In this editor, we defined a stage for each signal group in which this group can enter the intersection. This creates a pattern for each stage where each signal group is set to either a free state or non-free state. We now add the free states of the created stage. Here it is necessary to select the recently created intergreen time matrix so that it is validated if there is any conflict for any combinations of free states in the given stage. We add the rest of the stages and define them. As soon as all the necessary stages are defined, we proceed to their use in the definition of the stage transitions. Let's say that we have a stage-oriented signal program that consists of individual stages. It is therefore necessary to define the transitions between these stages so that one can exit a stage and enter the next. So, let's create the first stage transition where the source stage is stage 1 and the target stage is stage 2. It is again important to select the intergreen time matrix to ensure the proper timing of the clearing and entering signal groups. As we saw a moment ago, the stage transition name can be generated automatically as soon as the parameter data is entered for source and target stages. However, the name can also be changed manually by the user and one can always return to the original generated name by pressing the refresh button right next to the name field. The calculation of the given transition can be done using the default settings of the calculation options. These options are checkboxes in the dialog. After the transition is calculated, it is possible to easily extend its duration. It can be done using the drag and drop method 
in the upper area of the transition graphics. We will now go step by step through all the stages in the list and calculate all the according stage transitions. We will speed up these steps. After all stage transitions are created, one can use them for creating a signal program based on the stage sequence. The editor where we defined the stages before is separated in two parts, the stage definition part and the stage sequence part. Now we focus on the second part. The stages that we prepared before are now visible in the stage pool. We will now add all of them to the canvas. Here it is possible to conveniently organize these stages and also connect them to define a sequence. Once all the stages are connected in a single direction, all that remains is to set the individual connections with concrete stage transitions that we prepared a moment ago in the Stage Transitions editor. One can do this by choosing the option Assign all existing stage transitions in the Calculate menu. The last thing to do here is to use the defined sequence to create a signal program based on it. So, we chose the option Calculate Signal Program for a Stage Sequence from the Calculate menu. The editor then prompts us to select the stages by walking through the stage transitions, which are defined by arrows. Now we go from stage 1 to stages 2, 3 and 4 and then back to 1 to complete the entire loop. Without completing the loop, the calculation of the signal program is not possible. Once the loop is finished, it means the initial stage has been reached, the continue button is enabled and we can continue by defining additional parameters. Here we extend the duration of the cycle time for the signal program. Due to the large number of stages, it makes sense that all signal groups have enough time to pass through the intersection. And it is done. After a final confirmation and saving the changes in this editor, the signal program is created. Let's have a look at it in the signal program editor. We can see that the newly created signal program really consists of stages and stage transitions we defined previously in the other editors. The order is the one that we chose in the stage sequence editor. It can also be seen in the properties of the signal program that it has a cycle duration exactly according to the definition we chose in the additional dialog. The duration of the signal program can also be managed using the drag and drop method in the upper area of the graphics. Same as what was shown recently in the stage transitions editor. Stage transitions can also be created and calculated directly in the stage sequence editor without using the stage transitions editor itself. After all the connections between the stages are created using drag and drop method, it is possible to create and calculate all the relevant transitions using another option in the Calculate menu called Calculate All Stage Transitions. When these recent changes are applied in the Stage Sequence Editor, all the relevant transitions are visible in the Stage Transitions Editor.